What's up guys, we're back with another day of MLB action here on Saturday, April 27th. We gave a little bit back on Friday, guys, not gonna lie, it was a tough day in general. We did get the Dodgers minus 122, that was our biggest bet of the day, so getting that one right helps a little bit, but man, the Baltimore Orioles screwed us, they did not look good at all. They lost that game straight up in extra innings to the A's. The Mets lost, that one we didn't have the most confidence in, but unfortunately that one did not come through. The Cardinals saw a good outing from Michaelis, and they scored four runs. St. Louis hasn't been playing that well. So it sucks to be the ones that lose when they finally have a little bit of a bounce back. The Cleveland Atlanta game felt like kind of a bad beat. We saw eight runs scored in that one. And we had over eight and a half. So couldn't get just one more run across the plate for us in that one. Right now, we do have Milwaukee. They're still live. They're in the top of the ninth inning right now, tied up five to five with the Yankees. So if they could come through in that one, we could have an almost break even day. But just in general, not what we're looking for. Let's get back on track here with a loaded Saturday slate. Time to jump back in and figure out where the value lies. First, let's take a second and hit that like button to show some support for the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today and we'll give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game the day we've got the LA Dodgers going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. In this first game today, it's an afternoon start. We see the Dodgers come into this one. They're playing great right now. They've now won five in a row. They just won 12 to two in that game, so they have to feel pretty good about that. They're handing the ball in this one to Tyler Glasnow. He comes into this game with a four and one record on the series. He's got a 2.92 ERA, so things are humming right along for him. His last time out against the Mets, he did give up seven hits, but he went eight innings into that game, had 10 strikeouts, and did not allow a single run. He also didn't have a single walk in that game. This guy has had some just absolutely lights out starts this season. He's really just mowing batters down. He had a 14 strikeout game against the Twins, a game where he went into the seventh inning. He pitched great in that game. He's just looked dominant so far this season. So the Dodgers definitely feel good handing him the ball and they've got to feel great about how the offense is looking. They're just absolutely raking right now. 141 runs scored this season has them second in the majors. They're second in the majors in team batting average, second in on base percentage with a 350 on base percentage. That will definitely work. And their team slugging percentage is also elite. Team slugging percentage of 434. We've got Mookie Betts killing it. We got Shohei Otani killing it. This team, they've paid the big bucks and they are looking like it. They're going to need to continue hitting the ball here, but maybe they don't even need to hit it quite as well going up against the Toronto Blue Jays, who just lost 12 to 2 in game one of this series. So can't feel too good about that. They've now lost four in a row. They got swept by the Kansas City Royals in the series before this. So that's not a great look. They're handing the ball in this one to Yusei Kikuchi. He's gotten off to a very good start. He's 2 and 1 on the season with a 2.28 ERA. So those are all very good numbers. His last time out against Kansas City, he went six innings, gave up only two earned runs. He did give up a home run in that game, so maybe that's not too great, but he had a lights out performance against the Yankees before that, and he really just hasn't had any terrible outings this season. I mean, his first outing of the year, he did give up three runs to the uh, Tampa Bay Rays, so maybe that's not a great outing, but just in general, the guy has looked pretty good this season. The problem for the Blue Jays lately, at least, has been their offense. They haven't scored more than two runs in any of their last three games. Oh, side note, they didn't get swept by the Royals. They just lost their last three games in a row in that series. But just in general, they have not been hitting the ball very well. They're not getting runs across the plate. They're all the way down to 23rd in the majors in terms of runs scored, 21st in the majors in team batting average, and that's not a number that's trending in a positive direction. We've seen Justin Turner get off to a good start. That's really their main and almost exclusive bright spot this year. So they're going to need to turn things around, but going up against the Dodgers isn't really the place you want to be trying to like break a bad streak. We see the Dodgers at a a very reasonable price in this game. They're only minus 150. The Blue Jays are plus 138, which would be a decent price here with Kikuchi on the mound if they were going up against really any other team. But uh, guys, in this one, I'm not really looking at the over-under. It's currently at eight. That isn't something that really entices me. We're going to be leaning towards the Dodgers minus 150 in this one relatively hard. I'm not sure if this will make it into our pin comment plays, but I think it has a very good chance. I mean, we've definitely seen Glass now get off to a great start. The dude is looking fantastic. He's going to mow down those Blue Jay hitters who have been just having a really tough time. So give me the Dodgers in this one. Next up, guys, we have the Cincinnati Reds going on the road to take on the Texas Rangers. The Reds come into this game fresh off of losing 2-1 to one in Game 1 of this series. 
Not exactly what they were looking for. Not the start you want to get off to in a series. Obviously, they're 14 and 12 on the season, and they're handing the ball in this game to Hunter Green. He comes into this game still looking for his first win of the season. He's 0-2 with a 4.55 ERA. He is coming off a relatively decent start, I guess, against the Phillies. I mean, four earned runs in seven innings, that's not exactly going to get me super excited, but he went very deep into the game, and he looked serviceable. In his outing before that, he went only four innings against the Seattle Mariners and gave up only one run, so that was a good start, but the Mariners, not exactly an elite offensive team. He's been pretty, uh, it's been pretty unfortunate for the Reds when he started, guys. They are 0-5 in games that he started this season. Guy hasn't actually got much run support, but I don't know. That's that's a trend we cannot ignore for sure. The Reds' bats did not look good their last time out, and they've only scored a total of one run over their last two games. They got shut out in their last game but against the Phillies, so that can't feel too good. We've seen Ellie De La Cruz get off to a good start, but just in general, this team, they've been getting runs across the plate, but... It seemed like they were due for some regression with an on-base percentage that's only 19th in the majors, a team batting average that's only 24th in the majors. Like, this isn't going to be a team that's going to score a ton of runs if those are the kind of numbers they're putting up. I mean, they play a lot of their games in the Great American Ballpark, and their team slugging percentage is only 384. So this is definitely a squad that offensively was due for a little bit of regression. They're going to need to figure some things out here going up against the Rangers, who have now won two out of their last three. I mean, not a huge sample size, obviously, and only winning 2-1 to one against the Reds in Game 1 of the series. Not really a dominant performance. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Michael Lorenzen, who's off to a very respectable start. He's 2-0 with a 2.45 ERA. This is only his third start of the season. His last time out against the Atlanta Braves, one of the best offensive teams in the majors. He went six innings, gave up three earned runs on three hits. He had seven strikeouts and three walks. And I mean, you got to give the guy a little bit of grace here. He's very early in his season, just in general, only making his third start of the year. So have to feel pretty good about how he is looking right now. And the Rangers offense, albeit they're coming off of only a two-run performance. They seem to be trending in general in the right direction. I mean, they're 10th in the majors and run score with 122, so that's pretty positive. Their team batting average is very respectable, top 10 in the majors as well, and slugging percentage and on-base percentage, they're a little bit lower, but still clearly above average in the majors. So this is a team offensively that we can feel pretty decent about and looking at the numbers for this game it seems like a spot we can feel pretty decent about the Texas Rangers I mean obviously we have seen Hunter Green have some pretty good outings this year but we haven't seen the Reds be able to give him any run support and he's definitely getting touched up a little bit even against maybe not the like most elite teams so I think we can definitely lean towards the Rangers minus 125 in this game the over under you could definitely look at it it's currently at nine and with neither team really hitting the cover off the ball exactly right now under nine seems fairly reasonable for these two pitchers, but I think I'm going to lean a little bit more towards the Rangers minus 125 than I am to that under nine, but make sure to check down in the pinned comment. We could end up going either way on this game. Next up, guys, we got the Oakland A's going on the road to take on the Baltimore Orioles here in game two of their series. We saw the A's get the kind of shocking 3-2 to two win over the Orioles. Uh, not really the performance we thought we would see from them, and certainly not the performance we thought we would see from the Orioles' bats. The A's have now won two in a row. They're 11-16 and 16 on the season, so I think we can officially say that they're off to a much better start than a lot of people would have anticipated. They're going to be hitting the ball in this one to J.P. Sears, who is off to a pretty reasonable start. He's 1-1 one one with a 3.38 ERA. He comes into this game fresh off of shutting out the New York Yankees over six innings. He gave up only three hits, seven strikeouts. We're not exactly going to throw him a parade. The Yankees have not been a super hot hitting team, but before that, he did well against the Cardinals also, and really over his last three starts combined, he's gone 17 and a third innings and given up only a single earned run so the guy is absolutely dealing right now the A's offense in general though has not been looking too hot I mean only three runs in their last game only three runs in the game before that so not a team that's going to put a ton of runs on the board just in general but they have to feel good about where their starting pitching is at they are 29th in the majors with only 74 runs scored this season, though. So we're not exactly going to freak out about the prospects of this team. I don't think there's some major turnaround coming, but they have to feel good about how they started this series against the Orioles, who come into this game. They're 16-9 overall, obviously coming off of that loss in this one. They're going to be handing the ball to Cole Irvin, hoping he can kind of turn things around for them. His last start against the Royals was very, very, very good. He went six and two-thirds innings, four hits, Two walks, two strikeouts, so maybe those two walks maybe make it not a very, very good outing. But still, just in general, that's very solid. If you have a starting pitcher who gives up zero runs, that's definitely going to work. In his outing before that, he looked decent against the Twins. He did have some troubles here in the 
early goings in his first two starts of the year, that's for sure. But it seems like he's rounding into form here a little bit. And the Orioles' bats in general this season have been very, very good. They just sat down Holiday. The poor kid was only batting 0.59 this season. So he's having a tough time. Maybe time to go down to the minors and work on a couple things. And I'm sure we'll see him back in the big leagues before too long. But in general, the Orioles' offense has been elite. Their team batting average is 260, which is fourth in the majors. Their team run scored is fifth in the majors with 136. They're hitting the cover off the ball in terms of slugging percentage. Team on base percentage could lose a little bit of work, but we have to feel very good with how the Orioles are looking right now. And I mean, I know they didn't look fantastic in that last game, but I think the Orioles minus 170 definitely deserves a little bit of a look. Also, if you look at the over-unders for these teams, I mean, Oakland's not going to score a ton of runs. We have a lot of faith in their starting pitcher. We have a good amount of faith here in Cole Irvin going up against a not very good A's offense. So I think under 8.5 is very, very live in this game. I mean, Baltimore is a big over team. They're 15-7-2 to the over, but I don't like how they're swinging the bats right now. And in general, this isn't a great pitching matchup for them or for either offense. So I think we're going to see offense be at a premium in this game. So give me the under in this one. Once again, we'll see if it makes it into the pinned comment. I'm not 100% sure, but this seems like a value spot. Moving on to the next game on our slate, we've got the St. Louis Cardinals going on the road to take on the New York Mets. We saw the Cardinals look surprisingly solid in their 4-2 win over the Mets. We finally saw a decent start from Michaelis in that one, but they're going to be handing the ball to Sonny Gray in this game. He's off to a fantastic start. He's 2-1 on the season with a 1.04 ERA. He's making only his fourth start of the year. His last time out against the Milwaukee Brewers, he gave only two runs on five hits through six and a third, so the guy is absolutely dealing here. Right out of the gate, he had 12 strikeouts in that game against the Brewers, so we definitely feel very, very good about he, how he's looking, and I'm sure the Cardinals have a ton of confidence in him right now. The Cardinals' offense isn't exactly killing it. I mean, they did score four runs in their last game, so it took a three-run home run from Alec Burleson to uh, snap their like huge power outage. I mean, they've had a they've had a hard time hitting the ball this season, just in general. It hasn't been looking too good. They are only. 27th in the majors in terms of runs scored, 26th in the majors in team batting average, team slugging percentage, on base percentage. All of those have them very, very far down towards the bottom of the league and definitely in the bottom third of the league in general. We've seen Mason Wynn get off to a pretty good start. Wilson Contreras just crushed a huge home run in that game, but. Just in general, not a ton of positives to report about the Cardinals' offense right now. And they're going to need to continue to score some runs here going up against the Mets, who are 13-12 and 12 on the season now and have suddenly lost four of their last five overall. They're handing the ball in this one to Adrian Hauser, who is still looking for his first win of the season. He's 0-2 with a 7.45 ERA, so not exactly what you're hoping for. His last time out, he got obliterated by the Dodgers. He had eight runs in four innings on seven hits. He had four walks in that game, just not having a very good time. He's had a couple of pretty suspect starts this season. He has a couple of decent ones too. I mean, when your good starts are against the Tigers and the Pirates and your bad starts are against the Braves and the Dodgers, kind of seems like you're going to have a pretty hard time against any decent offense. Looking at the Mets offense in general, obviously not a great showing against the Cardinals their last time out. And in general, right now, they just haven't been hitting the ball great. We do see Starling Marte off to a decent and start. Pete Alonso is hitting the ball well. He's got seven home runs, but he's only batting 250, so we're not exactly going to throw him a parade about that. This team in general, they're 12th in the majors in batting average, 13th in the majors in runs scored. On base percentage is looking pretty solid. They're easily top 10, but team slugging percentage also not looking too hot, so they're going to need to find a way to generate a little bit more offense here. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Cardinals are decent favorites at minus 125, which makes a lot of sense Which with where they are in this pitching matchup. It seems like they have a big advantage to me. I think minus 125 is way too cheap for Sonny Gray. We're going to be on the Cardinals in this one in a significant way. This is definitely going to be one of our pinned comment picks. Cardinals minus 125, that's just not enough. Not an expensive enough price here with an elite pitcher on the mound going up against a pretty mediocre opponent. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Washington Nationals going on the road to take on the Miami Marlins. The Nationals got the 3-1 to win in Game 1 of this series, so they have to feel pretty good about that. But they're not off to the start they really envisioned. They're only 11-14 and 14 overall this season, which isn't great. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Mitchell Parker. He's off to a fantastic start, not letting his team hold him back. He's 2-0 and with a 1.50 ERA. He's coming into this game fresh off of a dominant start against the Houston Astros where he gave up zero runs in three hits over seven innings while striking out eight. So just dominating the Astros in that one in the start before that. Pitching at the LA Dodgers, he did give up two earned runs in five innings on only four hits, but he had zero walks and four strikeouts in that one. So his command is clearly great 
great, and he is just dealing right now here to start the season. The Nationals offense in general, though, has not looked very good at all, guys. They're in the bottom third in all the major categories, pretty much. Run scored 28th in the majors, like 84 runs through a total of 25 games. That's not going to get the job done. You're not going to win a ton of games like that. They lost all three in their series against the Dodgers. Not too shocking when the most runs they scored in that series was two. So, yeah. Pretty tough look for where the Nationals are at right now, but you have to feel good about the pitcher they're going to be putting out there on the mound, especially going up against the Miami Marlins, who are coming into this game 6-21 and on the season. They've lost their last four in a row. They got swept by the Atlanta Braves, and then losing game one of the series, they're going to be handing the ball here to Edward Cabrera. He's gotten off to a pretty respectable start. He's 1-0 and with a 3.27 ERA. His last time out against the Chicago Cubs, though, he gave up seven hits in five innings. He had three walks in that outing. His first start of the season, he looked pretty decent against against the San Francisco Giants. He only gave up a single run over six innings, and he had 10 strikeouts in that game. So the guy's got pretty solid stuff. I mean, he's a big right-hander. He can do some things out there on the mound, but are we looking at him as a real lights-out starter? It's hard to tell. It's very early on here, but we like what we see from him at least right now. The Marlins' offense, on the other hand, has been a completely different story. They are deep, deep down in the very bottom portion of the major leagues in terms of run production, team batting average, slugging percentage, all the major categories, guys, not having a very good time. I mean, no positives to really report for this offense. They're not a team that's hitting the ball well, and that's not something we can really expect to change here over the course of the season. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Nationals are actually plus 120, so the odds makers are very big on the, uh, the advantage here in the pitching matchup that Edward Cabrera seems to be giving the Marlins, but we're going to be looking at the over-under in this game. We we see Washington is a big under team. They're 14, 9, and 1 to the under. Miami is basically even over under team, but the number is currently sitting at 8, which isn't our favorite number, obviously, but we're going to be taking the under in this game. I wish it was 8.5, don't get me wrong, but we'll definitely take the under. I don't think we're going to see much offense in this game. Full starters have looked very, very good in their early going, so give me offense being at a premium in this game. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Houston Astros going on the road to take on the Colorado Rockies. The Astros come into this game. They're only 7-19 and on the season. They've lost five in a row. Just looking like a nightmare season here for the Astros. Not a lot of positives to report. They're handing the ball in this game to Ronald Blanco, which is one of their few positives we can report. He's off to a good start. He's 2-0 with a 1.33 ERA, and he has looked dominant here pretty much all season long. In his last start, he actually uh, went six innings, a five-hit ball, and gave up two earned runs against the Nationals. Might be his worst start of the season, guys, and that is still very, very solid. You'll definitely take two earned runs over six innings pretty much every day of the week. This guy has looked dominant out there. I mean, really, really good. He hasn't faced the toughest hitters like the toughest offensive teams in the league. But in general, you can't be mad about how he's looking right now. And it's not like he's going up against a monster here in the Colorado Rockies. The problem for the Astros has been their hitting, or at least kind of. They've just had all kinds of... They just managed to lose games this season. There's no way around that. They're 20th in the majors and run scored. They're 11th in slugging percentage and 10th in on-base percentage. So, I mean, I kind of expect this team to turn it around a little bit, but I just don't understand what's going on. They're just not winning games. They can't do it. They can't seem to put things together. Even now that they're like starting to get healthy and getting some of their pieces back like things are just not working out they're gonna need to figure something out here going up against the Colorado Rockies who are having a nightmare start to their season they're 7 and 19 on the year they did manage to split a two-game series against the Padres so maybe they have a little bit of momentum here but this is not a team that's going anywhere fast they're gonna be hitting the ball in this one to Cal Quintrill he's coming into this game 0-2 with a 4.33 ERA so not exactly what you would expect right now he's Looking pretty good, though. I mean, he's coming off a very good start against the Seattle Mariners. He gave up three hits, no runs. He had five walks in that game, though, so that's not a great look. Six innings pitched, so that's not terrible at all. The Rockies' offense, in general, has been looking a bit better. They did just score 10 runs against the Padres. They scored seven runs in their other win in that series, but in their losses in that series, they scored two runs and one run, respectively. So I don't think we're exactly going to be throwing this team a parade, despite the fact that they are playing at home in a very hitter-friendly park. I mean, maybe the most hitter-friendly park in the majors in history. I don't know if that's true. But just in general, they should be getting some hits out there. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Rockies are plus 184. The Astros are minus 205 with that big pitching advantage. But, guys, this is really crazy. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen a number like this, and I'm very confused by it. The over-under is at 17. 
we're going to take the under. I don't know why the number is that big. I don't know what they think is going to happen. We've got two pretty decent starters out on the mound. This seems like a mistake by the books or a trick or a trap or something, but we're definitely going to be on under 17. That's just way too many runs. We see Houston is a massive under team. They're 16, eight and two to the under, and they've got a great starter out there on the mound. So if this is some sort of mistake, guys, please let me know. But this could be our biggest bet of the day on the under in this game. I mean, I know they're in a very hitter friendly park and we could see a lot of runs and so on and so forth, but I just don't see that. We've got two decent starters out there, and that is just an astronomically high number. So give me the under, and please let me know in the comments if you think this is some sort of trick or mistake by the books, because it's showing that number everywhere that I can find right now. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe we'll see some sort of update or something, but we're going to be on the under. I don't know. That's all I can say about that one. <laughs> Next up, guys, we're looking at the Kansas City Royals going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. The Royals got the 8 to nothing win here in Game 1 of this series. They're looking very good right now. They're 17-10 and 10 on the season. They've won four straight and they're handing the ball in this game to Brady Singer, who's off to a very, very good start. He's 2-1 and one with a 2.76 ERA. His last time out against Toronto, he did give up five earned runs on five hits through only six innings of work. Clearly his worst start of the season so far, but I think we can expect him to bounce back because he's had a lot of success here in the early goings, albeit against some like semi-weak competition, but I don't know if the Tigers really count as elite hitting competition. The Royals' offense hasn't been like hitting the cover off the ball, but they've been doing enough to get the job done. We've seen Salvador Perez get off to a fantastic start. He's batting almost 350 with seven home runs and 25 RBIs. So he's definitely hitting the ball well. This team has a slugging percentage of 400, which has him in the top 10 in the majors. Team on base percentage is a little bit concerning. I mean, it's only 306 and that's 23rd in the majors. So they're going to need to find a way to get on base a little bit more. But in general, things are working out for them. I don't think they need to change too much, even going up against the Tigers here who are 14 and 12 on the season. So they can feel pretty decent. They're having a good year to start things off, especially for a team that didn't have have a whole lot of like major, major uh, expectations coming into this year. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Casey Mize. He comes into this game 1-0 with a 2.95 ERA. He's been doing everything he can to help this team get wins, and they are 4-0 and in games that he started. His last time out against the Twins, he went six innings, gave up five hits, no runs, four strikeouts and only three walks. So, I mean, only three walks, that's a little bit generous of a statement. Three walks is not great. So he's going to want to work on that. But the start before that, he had no walks and six strikeouts against the Texas Rangers in a game where he went six innings and gave up only five hits and two earned runs. So they have to feel pretty solid handing the ball to him. The Tigers offense in general, though, hasn't looked too hot. They've been bottom third of the majors in pretty much every major hitting category. We haven't seen anybody on their whole squad really get off to a great start. I mean, Kerry Carpenter is leading the way for them with a 2.78 batting average. Like, that's not exactly something we're going to get uh, really, really excited about. Team slugging percentage is bad. Their, their bat, team batting average is 221, the 25th in the majors. Like, this is not a team that puts up a ton of runs. That's for sure. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Royals are minus 104. The Tigers are minus 110. I think we're going to be on the Kansas City Royals despite the fact they're playing on the road and coming off a win in this game. You could also take a look at the under. The Royals have been one of the best under teams in the majors this season. They're 17, 8, and 2 to the under, but with an over-under of 7.5, that's a little bit of a tough look for me. So go ahead and give me the Royals minus 104, and we'll call it a day on this one. Moving right along, guys, we've got the New York Yankees going on the road to take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Things are still going in game one of this series. We've got the Yankees are now up one, but we're in the bottom of the 10th, and the Brewers have somebody on base. So we'll see how things uh, finish up in that one. We're really rooting for the Brewers hard, but we'll see what actually happens. In this game, we're looking at the Yankees to start things off. They're off to a very good start to their season in general. They're handing the ball in this game to Carlos Rondon. He's uh, he's having an okay time, and he's coming off out of an absolutely elite start against the A's. He went seven innings, gave only a single hit. Two walks, four strikeouts in that one. He's one and one with a 2.70 ERA, but that seven inning start is by far the deepest he's gone into a game. And a start before that, we saw him go only four innings against Toronto, and he gave up five hits and three earned runs. He had four walks in that one. So we're not exactly super excited about him, and we're also not that excited about the Yankees' offense just in general. They haven't been putting up a ton of runs. I mean, they've put up at least six in the game that they're currently playing, so I guess they can feel good about that. But they're 15th in the majors and run scored. They've had some big time guys have a tough start to their season. Aaron Judge, for sure. Um, yeah, just in general, not a lot of 
positives. I mean, their team on-base percentage is very good. We expect this team to eventually generate more offense. Like, they're going to generate more runs eventually. We just don't exactly know when that's going to be happening. They're going up against the Milwaukee Brewers who come into this game. They just tied things up, so we're very excited about that. Hopefully, the Brewers can figure out how to win this game. Milwaukee comes in this one playing pretty well. They're 16-8 and eight, or hopefully going to be 17-8 and eight on the season. William Contreras is off to a fantastic start, and they're handing the ball in this game to Joe Ross, someone they hope can get back on the right track. He's 1-2 and two with a 4.05 ERA, so not an amazing start start but he's coming off of one of his best starts of the season. He dominated the Pittsburgh Pirates over five and a third innings. He gave up only a single earned run. It was a home run in that one, so not great. He had only one walk and four strikeouts, so we feel a little bit better about how he's looking right now, and the Brewers' offense in general has looked very, very good. They're easily top five or top ten in all the major hitting categories. Christian Yelich has been on the IL for a while, so we're a little bit sad about that, but William Contreras, he's been raking to start the year, and it just all shows up here. As a team, they're just hitting the ball very very, very well. Team slugging percentage of 421. Team on base percentage of 343. That's a way to generate runs. They're getting guys on base. They're moving them around. Things are looking very, very good for this offense. The odds makers in this game, they've got the Yankees minus 130. The Brewers are plus 120. So I think the odds makers are giving a lot of respect there to Carlos Rondon. I don't know which way to go on this game, guys. I mean, the over-under is not super appealing. It's at 8.5. We see them scoring a bunch of runs tonight going into extra innings. So maybe we're going to see a little bit weaker of bullpens. So you could take a look at the over. But the Yankees have been one of the biggest under teams in the majors this season. So that's not super appealing. I don't have a ton of faith in the Brewers in this game because I don't have a ton of faith in their starters. So... I don't know, guys. This is a tough look for sure. I guess maybe give me the Yankees minus 130, but this is not a game that I'm going to be on myself. Next up, guys, we got the Tampa Bay Rays going on the road to take on the Chicago White Sox. The Rays actually took a 9-4 to loss in Game 1 of this series. Pretty crazy. We saw the White Sox snap a 7-game losing streak in that one. Pretty crazy stuff. The Rays can't feel great about that. You don't want to be losing to the bad teams here. They're handing the ball in this one to Aaron Savale, hoping that he can get things back on track. He's 2-2 two two with a 3.90 ERA, but he comes into this game fresh off getting absolutely shelled by the New York Yankees. He gave up 8 hits. Five earned runs, five walks, five strikeouts. So you're going to walk that many guys. You're going to get yourself into trouble, and things usually aren't going to work out. Four and two-thirds innings, not a great look. And it's kind of disappointing because he was coming off a very solid performance against the Angels where he struck out eight hitters over six innings. But in general this year, he hasn't really been dominant. I mean, his first two starts were very good. But other than that, things have kind of fallen off just a little bit. And when you're pitching for the Tampa Bay Rays, you're going to need to be pretty dominant because that offense is not looking too hot lately. This season in general, they're 19th and run scored in the majors with 103. Just not a ton of positives to report. I mean, Rosario's off to a good start. Paredes, I guess, is off to a pretty good start. But just overall, this squad, not one that you're super scared of offensively. I mean, their team batting average is average in the majors, like they're 15th overall. But team on base percentage all the way down at 302, which is 25th in the league. Team slugging percentage, not very good. Like, this just isn't a team that's scoring a ton of runs. They did score seven in their last game of the series against the Tigers. They scored four runs against the White Sox. But, man, if you're going to go nine runs to the White Sox, like, that is some scary, scary stuff. They're hoping they can get things back on track in this game against the White Sox, who are now 4-22 and 22 on the season. I don't know if that's a historically bad start, but guys, it sure does feel like it. They're handing the ball in this one to Jonathan Cannon, one of the best names in baseball, but not off to a very good start. He's 0-1 on the season with a 7.27 ERA. He just got absolutely demolished by the Minnesota Twins. That really messed up his season numbers, guys, because he had one good start this year. He got off to a very reasonable start. He went five innings of only one run ball against the Kansas City Royals. But, man, if you're getting demolished by the Twins here, that's pretty tough. Uh, not something you're going to be too proud of. I mean, six earned runs and three and two-thirds. Not a great look, and you're going to need to be dominant, generally speaking, when you're pitching for the Chicago White Sox because their offense has been the worst in the majors. It's not particularly close. This team just cannot hit the ball at all. 56 runs this season overall. A batting average of only 192. A team slugging percentage of only 292. This team doesn't even get on base. Like, there's no positives. Nobody's off to a fast start here. No good numbers here for the Chicago White Sox offense. Looking at the numbers for this game, you can see what the odds makers are looking at because the White Sox are plus 200 in this one. Team Bay Rays are minus 240. Do I think they have that dominant of a matchup here? I don't really think so. It feels kind of gross, guys, but you might have to go with the Chicago White Sox again if you want to find the best value in terms of 
like who's going to win this game straight up. But I think you might want to just go ahead and bank on the White Sox offense going back into the crapper and the Rays continuing to struggle at the plate. You could take the under in this game for sure. The White Sox are 13, 11, and 1 to the under. We do see Tampa Bay slightly an over team, but I don't see them scoring a ton of runs in this game. Just in general, guys, this is going to be one we're going to stay away from. I don't really like any of the numbers for this one. So if you skip this game completely, you'll be doing the same thing as me. Moving right along, guys, we're looking at one of the coolest series happening right now in baseball. We've got the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Atlanta Braves. The Guardians took the loss there in game one. They lost 6-2, to two, but they're obviously off to a very good start to their season. They're 18-8 and eight overall, and they're going to be handing the ball in this one to Tanner Bybee. He's off to a 2-0 and start, but his ERA not looking too hot at 4.44. His last time out, he looked very, very good against the A's, giving up only two runs in five and two-thirds innings. In his start before that against the Red Sox, he was also dominant. Really, there's just one main start that's kind of messing him up messing up his numbers this season that was against the White Sox where he gave up five earned runs and only four and a third so that wasn't a great look but his last two starts definitely seem like he's back on track so we can feel pretty good about him having the ball in this game and you obviously have to feel great about the Cleveland Guardians offense overall they've been generating plenty of runs this season they're sixth in the majors eighth in the majors in team batting average we've seen Stephen Kwan get off to a great start Josh Naylor's off to a good start Jose Ramirez is off to a very good start. Like this offense, they're just hitting the ball really well. They're sixth in the majors in terms of slugging percentage, ninth in on-base percentage. They're poised to score some runs, especially coming off of only a two-run performance their last time out. They're going to need to score some runs, guys, going up against the Atlanta Braves, who are 18-6 and six on the season and have now won four in a row. They're handing the ball in this game to Charlie Morton, who's gotten off to a good but maybe not completely dominant start. I mean, he is 2-0, and but his ERA is only 4.70, so that's not amazing. He had a bad start against the Marlins and a not-so-hot start against the New York Mets. His last time out, he looked good, maybe not dominant against the Texas Rangers. He gave up two earned runs on four hits over six innings so that's pretty good obviously we're not going to complain about that but for strikeouts two walks that's also pretty good he did have a game against the Mets where he walked five batters so he can definitely have some control issues at times there's no way around that but there's also no way here around the Atlanta Braves offense they've looked absolutely fantastic this season they're in near first place in every major category they're batting 283 as a team we've seen Marcelo Ozuna get off to an insane start he's got nine home runs already he's batting nearly 350 on the season like they are just, they're, they're hitting the ball pretty well, guys. Their team on base percentage is 355, which is first in the majors. This is a team you can certainly expect to put some runs on the board. So let's see if we can figure out who's going to win this game straight up. Here in game two of this series, we see the Braves are minus 180. So the odds makers have definitely chosen a side. They don't have too much faith here in Tanner Bybee, which I think might be a little bit misplaced. But also, I mean, the Braves offense is just so, so good right now. We took the over in this game yesterday and it didn't quite hit for us. We had eight runs scored and we needed nine. So that was a little bit disappointing. We see both of these teams with big, trends to the over but with an over under of nine I don't think we're too interested in going against that so I'm probably just going to take a little taste here of the Atlanta Braves minus 180 they just look like the slightly better team and I think they have the best of this pitching matchup so give me the Braves in this one but I'll be more excited to just watch this game as opposed to really having a ton of money riding on it Next up, guys, we're going to be looking at the Pittsburgh Pirates going on the road to take on the San Francisco Giants in the last game we're going to look at today. Right now, we see these two teams are tied up at 0-0 zero to zero and going into the fifth inning in their current game right now. The Pirates come into this game. They're 14 and th or actually 13-13 and 13 on the season, so can't be too happy with how things are looking right now after they got off to that fantastic start. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Martin Perez. He's 1-1 one one with a 3.45 ERA, so he's gotten off to a pretty decent start, but he got cooled off a little bit, knocked around a little bit his last two times out I mean giving up three runs to the Yankees over five and two-thirds that's not terrible but following that up by giving up six runs or four runs on six hits I mean to the Boston Red Sox over four innings he also walked four batters in that game so that's not a great look he had seven strikeouts so that was the most strikeouts he's had in the season in general so maybe that's a positive look but you can see he hasn't exactly been dominant we see the Pirates are only two and three in his starts this season and they've lost in his last three starts so that can't feel too great and it also can't feel great how the Pirates have been hitting the ball right now. I mean, they're scoreless through four innings right now, so that's not great. And going up against the Brewers, their the last two games of that series, I guess they did score five runs in the last game of that series, but the game before that, they scored only two. The game before that, they scored only two. Like, this isn't a team that's hitting the ball that well right now, which is disappointing considering the hot start they got off to. We see that they're 16th in the majors in terms of run score just overall. Team batting average is only 237 now. That has been plummeting. Team slugging percentage is also going way down. They're 25th in the majors 
pitches and slugging percentage. Team on base percentage is still holding relatively solid at 322. That's 11th in the majors, but this is not a team that we can trust to put up a ton of offense, and they're going to need to score a few runs at least going up against the San Francisco Giants, who came into this game after winning their series against the New York Mets. They are only 12 and 14 on the season right now, and they're handing the ball in this game to Jordan Hicks, who has gotten off to a fantastic start. He's 2-0 with a 1.61 ERA. He's been one of the bright spots for this team. Unfortunately, his last time out, they lost 5-3 against the Diamondbacks in a game where he looked very, very good. I mean, he didn't strike out anybody. He had four walks in that game, but he only gave up a single run over five innings on a single hit, so that's not a bad outing. If he could have just kept those walks in check, things could have worked out a little bit differently for him, but in general, this year, he's been lights out. He hasn't faced a ton of super tough hitting teams, but I mean, the Diamondbacks definitely count as a good hitting team. So right now we like where he's at. Jordan Hicks is in a pretty good spot, but how has the Giants offense been looking? I mean, it's been pretty middle of the road. They put Snell back on the IL too, which is a little bit concerning for them, but whatever, that doesn't really matter. We're talking about the offense right now and their team slugging percentage. Middle of the road, 16th in the majors. On base percentage, 16th in the majors. Run scored 107 this season, which is 17th in the majors. So they just need to find a way to generate a little bit more offense. Michael Conforto is leading the way for them with a 277 hit batting average and five home runs and 16 RBIs. They just need to give him some help. And just in general, they need to find some run support here for Jordan Hicks. He definitely deserves it. He's off to a very, very good start. Looking at the, what the odds makers think about this game, we see the Giants are minus 145, so they're definitely leaning on Hicks. Likely to have a very good outing in this one. And maybe they're a little bit down on Perez here, coming off of a couple slightly rougher outings. But I don't know, guys. We're definitely looking at the Giants minus 145. I'm not too interested in betting the Pirates right now, as they still seem like they're figuring a lot of things out and are not having a very good time. The over-under for this game, you can find eight or seven and a halfs out there, depending on which way you're leaning. If I was leaning at this one, I'd probably look towards the under. I don't expect either one of these teams to really score a ton of runs, but I don't think we're going to be on the over-under in this one. I think we're going to be on the San Francisco Giants minus 145. I don't think this is going to end up in our pinned comment plays, but that's definitely my lean on this one. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.